Merce here, Team Lucky, I'm Team Captain. Yeah, Matt Olson here from, you know, many don't know, from Anaheim, California, and you guys are listening to the RoboCast. Hello everyone, my name is Samuel 64 and welcome back to the Robocast with myself, Steve the Broken Killjoy, World of Woodrow, David Esmake, and joining us this week are Mark Demers and Matt Olson from the Lucky Team. Yeah, Canada. <laughs> Canada, right? Canada. <laughs> um, I, I actually think this is the first time we've ever had a Canadian guest, so that's a, mm. it's a first. Um, guys, first of all, how are you both doing? Excellent. Excellent. Good. Yeah, it's been good. Even after last night's fight, we're we're still happy. Top thirty-two yeah. and uh, <laughs> second year in a row here. So, but yeah, uh, yeah it was uh, it was explosive. <laughs> it definitely was that. Um, well, you mentioned last night, you know, and you mentioned the fact that it was a bit explosive. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Before we do the review of the episode, it is your absolute last chance to get use our discount code at Robots Room My Life. The discount code will expire as of. Thursday, I think. I don't know. Whenever the round of 32 starts. So yeah. use the discount code as and when you can, which is, of course, Robocast. I just did, finally. Oh, you did? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Very good. Level, right? Very good. <laughs> I was too late for one of those pizza jackets, though, man. Oh, yeah. One day. Maybe they'll restock. Maybe Who they knows? will. Guys, let's start with your season to date. And it's looking pretty good. Um, So far, so good. Well, what, you know... When you look at your opponents, were there any earmarks at the start of the season where you kind of thought, damn, don't fancy that, other than Cobalt, of course? <laughs> yeah, I mean, starting off, um, I mean, these guys are all experienced builders, and uh, we know they all had the potential to rip us apart or do serious damage. Um, one of the things that I felt um, encouraged by was they were all new builds, and, mm. you know, we all know that when uh, you go and make a lot of major changes, often things get worse. Even if you eventually get better, you usually go through a dip. And so we, we did have that benefit. Um, all the uh, all three of them were, were had the potential to hit really hard. We saw them spinning in the test box, spinning like crazy dangerous. Right? We were definitely aware that we could take a lot of damage in all three of those matches, mm. and, and the fourth, of course, as well. So four yeah. matches, four spinners. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It's certainly wasn't a uh, an easy schedule that the, <laughs> the that the selection committee gave you to to you know make your way through. Of the three fights so far, Matt, I'll ask you because obviously you were the one steering the thing. Who gave you the most trouble? Do you reckon to kind of get around and try and beat? Uh, Triton. Triton was the most difficult, um, and we were you know like Mark said, we saw them all. All four were spinners, and um, and we're like, oh man! So and and obviously Triton's a new build. Uh, Deep Six didn't make it on, and it's the same builders, and they've got a lot of experience. And we were looking at that, and I was talking to I had mentioned my buddy Andrew before. I was talking to him, and he was on their team. He goes, dude, the the sound that it makes is is terrifying. It's like a yeah. dentist drill, right? It's <laughs> awful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's terrifying. And then you see their drivetrain. It's so fast. And, you know, there's it's no, um, uh, as far as lucky, it's it's a slower bot. We're working on that. But, you know, in, in all things, it's it's a little bit slower bot. And it's big. And uh, we were like, oh, man, this, this could be a, a hard fight for us. And it was. Um, luckily, Mark had and the team had the right configuration. We had the the full armor, you know, all the way around, you know, mm. the, you'll see Lucky's got all these different configs now. Um, and that was our, our uh, horizontal config. And if you see when I, when I hit him at the very end, it, I say it was like a tink cause it was, cause it barely, it, it tipped them and they went up on their side and then their belts were slipping. And they, I don't think they knew that they could get tipped on their side like that. Cause it was like a, you know, like almost like setting, like putting a quarter, you know, and putting it on a table and, and having it chill there. You know, uh -huh. that's how it was. And um, they had ended up, they hit they hit Lucky's arm uh, in the temple. So they hit us right in the head. And it ended up taking the four bar and it, it got one of them and, and twisted it so that 
when the arm would come up, it, one, it wasn't as powerful, and two, it was all cockeyed when it was mm. when it was coming up. So that was like the last hit um, that she had when when we when we hit Triton. So it was we were very very close to losing that one, um, but uh, we had we did everything that we needed to do to to get the win on that. So that that was for sure the the hardest fight um, leading up until obviously uh, uh, Cobalt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've um, once again scoured the internet for some questions uh, from our listeners. Starting off with a guy called Jonathan Lee on Facebook, who says, great to see some Canadians on the show. Um, both of you, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was your experience at Robo Games this year? And could you also talk about your best memories that you had running the original Ziggy at Robo Games, where you won the event five times? Sure. Yeah, we were good there. Um... I mean, I, I, I don't have to say about Robo Games. Maybe I'll let Matt talk because some of that Ziggy stuff was historical. So mm-hmm. uh, it was fun. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, as far as as far as lucky, we we went there and it was kind of um, for me. It was a little last minute. Mark Mark had uh, had the plan of going to Robo Games, and I was like, hey, you know, because we if you've ever seen us walk out there, especially during the Cobalt one, you saw like you know about probably 30 team members on the lucky uh they say we have the biggest team that's there um and when we were there there's uh, we were going to have a large team and then it ended up being basically uh myself my girlfriend mark and uh his kids and robert and uh another guy and you know so it was a yeah it was a smaller team and realistically the guys that probably know the robot the best is probably me and mark <laughs> you yeah. know as, as far as that so we're we're down there wrenching and um uh robo games i would say it was my first time there like like you had said ziggy's won it several times and um when we went there we went with a with a clear notion of okay what are what are lucky's current um uh current things that we need to improve upon so we almost use robo games as a testing bed uh, for the next season of BattleBots, and Mark and I were talking um, uh, a couple weeks ago or, or a couple days ago, and just saying, you know, it felt like we got another season underneath our belt of testing um, because we're testing out uh, uh, drivetrain motors right now, going to going to brushless stuff. You know, it's definitely time. Um, so we're seeing that we're going to need to up the voltage, uh, but we were able to go there. The robo games seem to be a little bit more civilized. Um, Mark will say it better than me. Where uh, you know, robo games is kind of like a. It's like a. Um, you know, you go in there with one bot and you just try and keep that one bot going. Mm-hmm. Battle bots is like a marathon where like yeah. Mark has eight chassis there and seventeen arms and all these configs. You know, we had um, uh, we had taking. Basically, if you see that version of Lucky with the with the fender flares, which is kind of mm. my favorite look now, mm-hmm. um, that came off of our last fight that was at uh, that was at BattleBots uh, for the season, and then it it made its way up to Robo Games. So that that same bot was the one that was fighting in uh, BattleBots, and then it became Ziggy Junior. Um, but it it was a lot of fun. We faced uh, some we faced a uh, Whomper out there. Um, we were able to go fourth overall, uh, with everything and Manta ended up taking it all. So, um, and we fought, uh, Mad Catter, which was, uh, Bad Kitty or something like that. I forget. Mark, Cataclysm. Mark might know. Yeah. Cataclysm, yeah. Cataclysm. That's it. And, um, so, and those guys are super cool and, um, Robo Games was a cool experience. It, it brings in a, you know, a lot of people of the lower weight classes, Mm-hmm. Um, it brings, you know, a lot, a lot of the fans from battle bots are there. So a lot of people were there checking it all out. Um, I had a ton of fun. Um, it was a really good time and we learned a lot with, uh, with lucky this year to, um, to improve upon it for this upcoming season, whenever it may be, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. as long as we get in, you know, so, yeah, um, we, it, it's nice to have another place to play with heavyweights, it yeah. relatively, you know, close to the event, uh, not too far from where BattleBots is held at this point. I know that, like, since they've moved to Vegas, I'm sure it's a longer, a longer trip between between the events now. Uh, but yeah, it it it's always been a nice uh, testing ground for bots that are trying to make it onto BattleBots because there's barely there's there's very few places where you can quote unquote safely test these bots uh, without <laughs> having to be behind a blast shield. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, 
with with your bot, I think we can kind of get away with it. Uh, really more lucky is more dangerous with his drive and its flipper. But then again, uh, I wouldn't want to stand on that thing when it's firing. So you know, yeah. just whatever. Uh, Would you rather sit on it? We, uh... <laughs> you, know, you, you know, if you <laughs> well, people <laughs> well people sit on airbags and go launching, so I can't be that. Bad, right? <laughs> well, I put a seatbelt on it. There's an attraction ride. There you go. <laughs> um, let's not do that. Let's not give people ideas. No, no. <laughs> just watch Jackass. <laughs> Anyway, we actually we uh, never we never test the machine uh, fully pressurized with the drive on. It's one or the other. We we gotcha. unless it's in the box. So we we rarely run at full pressure except for at the event, or or we'll be full pressure stationary. Mm. For testing. That's why all those times where we've seen the bot in the box and it flips so hard that its arm will bend, <laughs> so you guys yeah. don't see yeah. how much no, force it actually has until the end. Too, but it's it's really weird how. It, it, even when you're pushing, when we're upside down, if we if we catch the floor hard or not, like it really varies a lot on how much we flip over. So the even with the same pressure, with the same timing in the valves, uh, the the amount of flip we get is, is variable. It's uh, it's a little hard to control, but we do a lot of testing for that. Um, I'll add to the Robo Games thing. Just uh, Matt went through some of the matches and things. I'll say Robo Games for me, um, it's it's a lot of fun. I, I was. The expectation going there was uh, we were trying new motors, like Matt said. I thought uh, if we go there, we have two matches, which is the, the minimum. We have two matches. Uh, we test the new motors and we have fun. Like that's the bar that we set. Um, mm -hmm. I was really intent on driving because I haven't driven in a while. So <laughs> it was fun. Like it's just, you know, that was the expectation. We did better than I. Uh, we were kind of planning on. It was kind of last minute prep. Uh, we, we didn't have a fully working machine. We sent parts from Canada to the event, we installed them the night before. Brand new motors, new motor controllers, and uh, we were doing. It was a kind of amazing how much work we did at the event with very little tools. You know, boring tools from uh, Big Dill and Gary Jin and the other teams. Like it's it's pretty pretty cool. Some chain and um, we borrowed air fittings from the hexadecimator guys. So that was um, yeah. For seven matches in four days, it was pretty hard, and uh, we still got to talk to our friends there, so that was good. Um, mm -hmm. I'll say one thing that was different is uh, I, I don't know if Matt will say it the same way, but uh, when we're at battle bots, like it's it's very dialed, and we're it's a lot of pressure. You know, you, we have these headsets. Matt and I are communicating, mm -hmm. uh, and I oh, those aren't just for show. <laughs> <laughs> you have all this deafening noise, and you could be whispering. You can hear your teammate in your ear right and um like we're at these matches and i i'll see things that he's not looking at and i'll try to point it out but he's dialed into something over here so i don't want to be yelling at him distracting him so it's it's i try to be selective but I, you know trying to maintain professionalism and and as effective as possible mm -hmm. and i think this year at robo games we kind of got into chirping each other a little bit when i was <laughs> who's in my ear and who's driving I was in his ear. Was, was so just Are you backseat driving, Mark? Is that what you're trying to tell us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I give think... you one example. I know Matt will get into it, but when we fought, um, we fought Womper the fought Womper the first time, which was you know Whiplash with their with their, their danger, um, and we had very little air. We didn't have a fill. We got this like we, we had. We didn't even know how much we had, but it was like a thousand psi of storage, and we might have five shots. We might have ten shots. We have no idea, but it's almost nothing. Right, and Matt started driving. I'm like, don't miss Matt. I'm like, Matt. But it was this banter back and forth, and uh, it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. That's good. yeah, it was, pre it was pretty me. good. Where where he would go, and Mark would Mark would tell me, he goes, he goes, you miss Matt. He goes, we're out of air now. Great job. And I'm like, <laughs> and I go up again and I hit him again. He goes, well, now we're out of air, Matt. You know, great job. And I hit him. He goes, okay, well, I guess that was okay. And then I go and I miss again. He goes, now we're definitely out of air. Great job. We're going to lose this match, you know. <laughs> you know, and then at the, at the, at the very end. It was just, it was at, pretty the, at the very end, they say, hey, is your bot still functional? And it was the, I think it was the closest match between, it was like 17-16. And uh, between us and Womper, and it it could go either way with it. And uh, they're like, "Hey, are you functional?" Went around, and I still hit the arm. And he goes, "Well, now we're out of air, Matt." You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be over. right at some point. Yeah, yeah. Ev eventually, you will be out of air, but I don't, don't know when it when it may be. Yeah, <laughs> I was right eventually. 
Uh, and then yeah. even uh, when I was driving against, I, I drove the match against Crash and Burn. And uh, we started off the match, and I went after, I guess, Crash, I think. And uh, I tried to mid arena tunnel, but I wasn't under him, and I missed. And then Matt's like, nope. I'm like, no, oh, shit, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so those goes those guys. I got, I got him the second throw, but I had to pin him against the wall before I threw him. But it was it was pretty it was pretty funny banter. It was a little bit less serious. Uh, yeah, I mean, game. I think ultimate, a little lower, but it made, made yeah. it more fun. I actually think it helped with our our you know uh, driving duo, right? One driving, one one talking, and it. Uh, yeah. It's a good team building you know, exercise. Yeah. Really, well, I, I, yeah. it does it does help a lot because I think it was. Um, uh, we wore them in the in the in this last season, and then I don't know if we, did we wear. I do. I think I don't think we wore them in twenty twenty one. No, I no. want to say because um, we actually use those, and I, I I'm actually going to say now that that's probably going to start a trend within BattleBots. I think we're going to see more of the headsets because we use mm-hmm. them. We use them in our eight scale and fifth scale racing because of all the noise and everything that's oh, going yeah. on. Because you can hear the person right there, and kind of having like. I'm not, I, I can drive lucky, but me knowing a lot of the other stuff and some of the strategies that Mark comes with, with, you know, 20 plus years of experience, you know, there's no, there's no substitute for that. So him kind of looking at stuff or backing up and knowing the bot and, you know, sometimes, you know, with the, our other motors, if we're pushing on somebody or we're trying to pull away, um, you'll notice during the Kraken fight, I blew up a motor, um, yeah. And I was just even just pulling back from them, trying to get out from underneath them. And those motors got so hot. And uh, and it's one of those things where, you know, he's able to help me. So, yeah, and it was even funny during the, the Cataclysm fight that we had. And um, I got underneath them pretty quick and I was bouncing them all over. And, you know, Mark Mark didn't want me to hit them. But then afterwards, he's like, Oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> I would, I would have hit. So he's like, I didn't say nothing. So he's like, oh, that surprised me, you know, and, and that you got that shot on him. So it's, um, you know, having that extra set of eyes and somebody in your ear that you can trust mm-hmm. is is uh, super beneficial. So um, absolutely, I'm saying it now. I see that happening a lot more for the next season, for sure. Yeah, we've seen other teams. Other teams have asked us about them, and uh, you know, my story is the same every time. You know, Matt took these things out, we're putting them on. I'm like, okay, this looks cheesy. Come on, I'll. I'll do it, I guess. And, but we put them on, and it was it was remarkable how much difference it made. And uh, like Matt said too, like when, when there's so much background noise at BattleBots that the only way to communicate otherwise is the screen. Mm-hmm. And it's a real distraction, right? So it's really helpful. And uh, besides the you know driver and experience combo, there's also just the element of it, another set of eyes, right? And it's it's like a I, it's like a race engineer for for a racing driver. Right. I, I was right. thinking that I'm a race engineer like the sponsors on the on the ovals, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just that extra pair of eyes. And even the navigator in, you know, rally car racing where they're right <laughs> beside them. Right. Yeah. But I one of the things I noticed when I was fighting Crash and Burn, um, and I don't think either one of us noticed it at the time, but afterwards I noticed when when they're inverted, they had terrible drive. Mm-hmm. And I was so focused on the one I'm driving after, I didn't even know the other guy was barely moving. Mm. Right. And that's the kind of thing that a, a co pilot can point out or notice mm-hmm. right and and sometimes matt's driving more over there and and i'll see oh they even i guess i think kraken he was up on the shelf and matt was waiting from him out and I, i'm like oh i think he's going to come off the front and so mm-hmm. matt was waiting from there but actually repositioned i think that was a good example of just a set of eyes looking at it from a different like what's what's the other threat right um so it's yeah. been good it's been helpful i'm, I'm pretty sure there's other teams that are going to have those headsets mm-hmm. uh I think the first, I, I would be willing to bet a hundred pounds or dollars, whatever it is, uh, that the uh, Aaron Hill will have them next time. At okay. Least yeah, that's my bet. Okay. And well, then we'll... after that, everybody will have them. <laughs> I say, well, well, we'll come back to this podcast in a year's time, and then and then we'll, <laughs> and, then we'll and then we'll see, right? <laughs> yeah. I was, I was more thinking like this requires Aaron to like. React during a fight instead of just yeah. being stone cold staring <laughs> just, at bits yeah. flying towards him. Yeah, it's true. It's absolutely. True. So I'm curious. Uh, so uh, Choppy Boy Builder Jack Tarleton on Discord asks, "How did this marriage between RC Driver, Extraordinaire Matt Olson, and Lucky Team happen? Uh, do you guys know each other behind? I, I, did you guys know each other before uh, before BattleBots? Or like, I, I, what was the story behind this this uh, this uh, grouping?" 
So I guess I'll go into it. Um, I met my friend uh, Andrew Burgraff when I was at a Canadian Nationals up in uh, Ottawa, Canada. Mm-hmm. And um, so we were we were there and I had known Andrew for probably two, three good years when I was going when I was flying up there uh, representing my um, the company that I worked for at that time, MIP. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I was their main guy, I'd go out and uh, show off the products and race and everything. Anyways, Andrew, Andrew later got into bots and everything after he was into RC and he was able to get me into the Long Beach um, uh, battle bots. What well, I don't know what season that was, Mark. I think it was 2016. 2018. I want to say 2018. 2018 yeah. So it was the first and, discovery season. Yeah. Yes. So no, he got me in the first, there. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And I was able to get back in the pits. I really didn't know anybody. And, you know, I was there. And Mark was there and, and what have you. And, the first time I came, it was a, I think it was the fight against Son of Waiachi, and Lucky looked like a tin can, you know, yeah. got smushed, you know, in one of those crushers where was that the one know, with like, the skates at the back? Yeah, I think uh, that oh. it was the I don't, it was the one with like the the size up at the back, right? So I had, like, yeah, at the, the skis, the back and at the, the skis or something, right? Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Well, the same like weight a, from the wheels to try to put more armor to try to defend. A motor was a part. <laughs> the everything was it was a full rebuild on mm-hmm. on Lucky. And um, how I always say it is, is uh, a mini bike and an RC car had a baby. That's that's what a, <laughs> that's what a battle bot is. And yeah. um, I kind of looked at it, and you know, the the drivetrain in there and everything else, the electronics, and you know, I I pretty much figured figured out, except for the pneumatics. That's that's not my that's not my expertise with it. But the rest of it, I understand. And um, and looking at it, so I kind of got in there, and you know, everybody's kind of just looking at it, and I was like, oh, you know, I can kind of help out, and I kind of just showed up and then um i think we went we had during that match i think mark said that uh, we had these uh, these hub carriers for the axles that were like plastic or something like that and uh, we went down to my machine shop and andrew was there and we machined some new ones for lucky right there uh, because we weren't going to be able to do it anywhere else so mark was like oh shoot you know this this guy you know we got some abilities here and there and and was um you know, so we kind of became friends after that. I was helping out in the pits. I was like, yeah, I can come down. You know, I was like taking hours off of my job. Like, hey, I got into Battle Bots, boss, you know, peace. You know, <laughs> I'm going to go help out. Got on my priority show, straight. You know? <laughs> so it was, uh, it was actually a lot of fun. And then I think pretty much every season since I've been on helping in the pits. Mm-hmm. And then it ended up just being where you, you've seen uh, Lucky's had a couple different drivers. I know mm-hmm. Curtis was one. Gary Chin was one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark has been one, obviously. Um, and I'm sure there's some other fuse that I'm that I'm not thinking of. Um, but ended up being where uh, I had tested it out in the test box, I think the previous season. And Mark saw me drive it around. I was drifting Lucky around inside the box, not hitting anything. And he's like... Mm-hmm. You've never driven a battle bot before? I'm like, no, you know, <laughs> and uh, and he's like, oh, okay, and that I think that planted a little bit of a seed, and then he knows obviously that I'm into RC, mm-hmm. so the the um, you know the the hand eye coordination is there, yeah. and uh, I asked him, you know, just on a whim, I said it was jokingly, I'm like, hey, Mark, you should give me a chance to you know drive Lucky in in the next season, and he kind of pushed it off for a little bit, and I think he, you know, thought about it, and he's like. Well, you know, uh, well, let's see. And uh, and he always gives a, a a better example than I can give. But he'll say someone where um, you know they've they might come from you know um, pretty much let's say let's say ping pong or something like that, and they might be a decent tennis player, you know, or vice versa, mm-hmm. you know, where they've got the skills for it. It might be in a different facet, mm-hmm. but if if we tailor it, it might be really, really good. If they're a world champion at tennis, they could be possibly a world champion at ping pong. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of like what he's, he's gone through. And, you know, and, and so far I think we've had our, you know, just proofs in the pudding. We've had our best seasons yet so far. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we work uh, better every year. I think there's growing pains with everything. Um, but I think we've, I think it's sparked kind of a, a new, you know, um, generation for lucky which is which is good i think absolutely we've said the same thing we've said exactly the same thing like we kind of thought you know when when lucky came back in 2016 you know had that great fight with beta had that great fight with yeti um you know both ultimately ended up in defeats but it was they were both you know proof that the concept worked and 
as the years went on, it's kind of like, hmm, where's this going? Yeah. And is the field starting to get too far away? You know, can right. you guys catch up? Uh, and uh, I mean, little do we know that there was a uh, th there was just a, a tweak that had to be made behind <laughs> the think, sticks. And I think you we've, know, we've used the term new renaissance or something like that mm -hmm. for, yeah. Yeah. for lucky over the last few years, because it, it's just been flooring it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, we I'm all not, yeah. do a lot too. I mean, the, the driving, it, it's just another one of those we're trying to get better all mm -hmm. the time. Right? All those intangibles. And, right. And, and driving is one where we always wanted to do more. And, and I actually drive more now because Matt's here. And, and I learn more watching him too, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, a circular path there. And then feeding back his driving skill into engineering and design of the machine. So there's a whole bunch of things there. Uh, in, you know, the comment on configurations this year, that's another thing where, you know, it's like uh, we're working on getting better. And I, I think as the pack is getting better, we're, we're hanging up near the top a little bit better. I think it's uh, to, you know, uh, uh, exert, the exertion of a lot of work over a lot of years. And we yeah, haven't yeah. done it. So it's yeah, not, definitely. some definitely. of it's luck. We had a good, uh, good draw this year for opponents, but I think we're continuing to improve. Hundred percent, mm, definitely. The the results have been very clear that you know there's there's a there's a clear trajectory of where Lucky's going, and that's it's really exciting to see. Yeah, but going back to the question with Matt, he gave you his version. So, for, for <laughs> me, it's, um, so basically, he was a ranch with our team for two years, and that that year that he came on was literally, and you don't see it on television, but it was like we just had that match with Son of Waiachi, and it was mm -hmm. absolutely decimated, and we had a spare frame, but we didn't have spare machines. It was like. But we have parts, we have a frame, and it's this is a week and a half of work. And and what you don't see on television is we signed up to do the Desperado tournament the next day, mm -hmm. right? And, and on television, it looked like six weeks or something. But this was literally like 2 o'clock on Saturday to 11 a.m. on Saturday, uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And that's when Matt showed up. And he's like, what's this pile of shit, right? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and he's like, I do it with with uh, Andrew. Like you said, we had these plastic pillow blocks. They went away. Two hours later, we had aluminum pillow blocks. We installed them. And, like all these things we were doing, and then we immediately realized that his his experience in racing is not just on the track, but it's in the pits and repairs and setup and everything else. That that jived with us really well. So we were working together for a couple of years, like you said, as as teammates, right? And then uh, when he said, uh, "Can I drive?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure. That's the box is right there." And then I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, you mean more than the test box? I'm like, oh, I get it. <laughs> really proud, right? So, uh, so that was a little bit of the debate. Uh, but I think the the analogy that I, I use is, um, you know, like if you're 22 years old and you're seven feet tall, and the NBA finds you, you can make the NBA, and you can be a dominant or an effective player in the NBA. But you have to learn position. You have to learn to shoot. You need to learn. Defense, offense, you, there's a lot to learn. So your your height, you know, gives you like an inherent advantage, but you still have to learn the game. And I think mm -hmm. that I, I liken that to what Matt's got. The the skill on the sticks is incredible, right? Um, learning, and we know other people that have come from uh, RC. Uh, James Arlex won. Uh, Jeff Waters won. There's a bunch in the sport. Uh, mm -hmm. But one of the the counterintuitive things is now you have to learn to drive backwards, mm -hmm. right? And in RC, I think it's even a penalty or a disqualification if you go back. Right? So you're hardwired to go fast, forward all the time. And that's what Matt's got. And then this mm -hmm. game of, oh, I got to back up sometimes to make, I can use it to close distance, but I need to back up to create distance. Right? And that's, that's learning. And I've seen some examples where Matt tries that in a match. Uh, one match where we got destroyed by Copperhead. But there was like 10 seconds where Matt was backing and Copperhead couldn't touch us. And I think we, I think we need to incorporate more of that into our game, and we're getting there. Like I think we're going to be better next year. We're going to be better the year after. We're going to be better the year after that. Like it's just, it's an ongoing uh, race. Everybody's getting better, and uh, we have to, we have to have a pretty good sprint on to stay ahead, uh, or, or even to stay uh, at pace. You know. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's my rank to do. Matt, drive. It's been good. <laughs> Yeah, and another thing that, that Mark was saying exactly, we we can't reverse. And the other thing is we have like a, a bell crank system, you know, so the steering's different. It's tank steer mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. with uh, BattleBots. So that was different. So Mark, 
Mark got me these, uh, what was it, D2 kits or something like that, yeah. like the, the little guys. And uh, he shipped them to me, and I built them, I think, like a week before. I had them for probably four months, but I <laughs> built them, like, a week before BattleBots. And I was in my shop, and then, you know, we had, like, a little tire that was there, and I was just going up against it and going around. And at first, it, you know, I was all off. And then we had, uh, we set up, like, a little makeshift arena at BattleBots in the pits. And I was there and I was testing it. You know, I was going around hitting these pucks, drifting, you know, going around, you know, keeping it in front of me. Then we were battling other, you know, other competitors, other drivers that were there, and, you know, pretty successful with it. And, um, yeah, it it was it was a different learning curve. Like I definitely had to, to switch gears in my head because um, it's a different style, you mm-hmm. know, altogether. And, and you have to be absolutely ruthless. Like it's it's. Like I'm a, I would say I'm a very kind person. Like you have to be so ruthless in there because they're trying to kill you, you know? And I, and that's, yeah, Yeah. it's, I never (laughs) had experienced that before. You know, I'm not a fighter or anything like that. Like I never experienced that. It's almost like, uh, what's a fight or flight, you know, Mm. kind of, um, reaction and the adrenaline and what you have going on and the fans and the, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollar robot and a whole team behind you. And, you know, everybody's there and it's come to do this. So all that's, you know, on your shoulders. So it's, it's a lot to be. And then it, it, it takes, uh, it takes a toll because I, you know, I realized that I made a mistake with, um, mm-hmm. against tantrum. That was, that was my fault, um, with definitely not being ruthless as I should have. Cause we actually, if you, you go and you slow motion, I've watched that fight about a hundred times and I actually broke their self writing gear. So the first time I had them flipped over in the corner, they were done. But I went back and I kept like, I, I shouldn't have. I should have played more game strategy with it. Yeah. It's and very I hard if, to hold back. And I yeah. think if Mark would have been in my ear, he would have been like, hey, wait, you know, don't, don't, don't go and hit him, you know, or mm-hmm. something like that. Or like, let's see what happens real quick, but just be right by him. And, um, you know, it was just a lot of inexperience. And then I would say against the, um, Mark had mentioned the, the um, not the the cobalt fight, but uh, against um, Copperhead, oh. um, event against Copperhead, where I went up against them, and there were a couple hits where I was like, I was right on them, and the the arm just goes right over their wheel, you know, and I'm doing everything, and Mark says, do not fire into their weapon, whatever you do, <laughs> you know, whatever you do, don't fire into their weapon. So I had got to the side of them, I'd done a couple things, but still, Lucky could do nothing. And I think I personally felt a little defeated with that one because I'm like, I didn't have a strategy. Like, we're not getting underneath them. They're, I call them the roly-poly death machine. You know, they are, <laughs> they are a, a mean, mean bot. And they, I went, we went three minutes with them. And you can yeah. see in this season, mm-hmm. not many bots go three minutes with, with Copperhead. But we did. So that was a testament to Lucky uh, with durability. But still strategy for winning that. Um, we didn't really have a plan that season. And then when I, and I think that was one of my first experiences with a vert drum. And then the same thing happened with switchback. So switchback was a, like a vert drum. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm asking, I'm like, how do we beat these guys? How do we beat these guys? And at first they told us that their drive, you know, their drive hadn't been working in the 21 season. And so they're like, they're going to be vulnerable. You're going to be able to go around them. And no the one fight where it worked. Just, yeah. yeah. And then they like powered up and I'm like, oh, I'm like, where did this guy come from? <laughs> and like, he came around, powered up his weapon, bam, right in the side of Lucky, bent mm-hmm. in the, bent in the wheel into the, into the chassis. And that was it. Mm-hmm. But that was like, I was like, oh my God. I'm like, I just screwed that up. But I was so, I was so like, I can say it. I was afraid of Copperhead, you know, where I didn't want to go face to face with a vert drum again. I didn't know how to fight him. No one does. You know? <laughs> no, so uh, any of us on the field scene are well aware. We don't so want to fight drums. I was, so trying, <laughs> I was trying to like figure it out. I'm like, okay, I could just go around him. I'll use our mobility, you know, to, to get lucky around. But then they got their drive figured out. And uh, that, was another, that was another mistake of mine of under anticipating them as well as, you know, being where I was in my head too much, you know, and I think I've learned a little bit more since then, not to, not to be like that. And, uh, you know, talk to Mark some more on some stuff and strategy and everything, but 
still we have to figure out the vert drum you know we see this these egg beater designs and you know um a lot a lot of these things and and it's like 80 percent of the field 70 percent of the field is is this so it's uh it's definitely something that a lot of the builders are trying to figure out including us definitely yeah and, and, uh, I'll, I'll go back to his comments about tantrum right so, so imagine this though he's in the pits driving the little d2 kit and and then his first match ever is against tantrum who went on to win that season right yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like first, what the heck first match ever right and and they went on to take the whole thing and if you watch the first 20 seconds of that match you had it, it. Was all that yeah <laughs> You know, and it's he kind of said I might have told him to, to back off. I don't think I said anything. And it's it's really easy after the match is over to slow mo and go, oh, you should have done this or you should have done that. Mm -hmm. And anyone that's ever driven a match, you, you don't have a second to, to make a decision. You nope. act, and uh, sometimes it works, and sometimes it's a mistake. Um, when you're doing it, it's not obvious that it's a mistake, right? Sometimes afterwards, it's like, oh, man, I should have done something different. But uh, I think for his first match, like. We we don't flip tantrum back over that that would have changed that whole season very dramatically. Yes, definitely. This first fifteen seconds of the battle bus crash, right? Was, was beating a champion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lucky yeah, lucky's yeah. butterfly effect. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was one hundred percent. Yeah, we would have fought uh, Copperhead if we if we would have won that match. Mm. It was the total butterfly effect. Like you said, it wasn't that uh, Mark told me to stop. I wish he would have told me to stop yeah. <laughs> when when uh, when I I went and I flipped them back up onto the onto the little lever arm because mm -hmm. guys were saying like oh you know he was being nice or maybe or this and that like they were doing the countdown you know or they were um uh, what was it they were they were looking at it and they were they were gonna punch off the thing it was mm -hmm. gonna happen um, and that lever arm comes out. So before I should have just sat there and had a haymaker waiting for them when they did get off. Like that's what mm -hmm. I should have done. But I went in there to get a, to get another move in. Mm. Um, it's, it's, but I should, I, I should have been waiting. Hindsight is 2020, you know, ultimately you yeah. could have got in there and, and hit them, but what's to say that they land right side up and they still do what they do anyway. It could have, anything right. could have happened. Right. I think it, it comes into it where you, it felt to us watching that you were taking command of that fight and just saying they're going to get off. So let me be aggressive here and and mm -hmm. show that we're we're on top of this match still, and that, that's yeah, how it came across to us anyway. It's so, incredibly aggressive to to free a, a stuck opponent. Yeah, so you get really lots good of good aggression size. points with that one. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Rayon the robot on Discord asks, "Do you guys still have the original uh, super heavyweight Ziggy, or has it been lost to time?" Uh, okay, yeah. So we we got a partial question with Ziggy before, so this is I guess the second question in part two. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, we do have Ziggy. It's uh, it's actually with a friend of mine who was my core teammate uh, back then in California. He's kind of moved on into Burning Man projects. We're still friends. I still help him with the Burning Man stuff here and there. Uh, but uh, he, he's got it at the the office at the shop. So uh, nice. I'm going to go to San Jose. I can go see it anytime. Uh, we didn't have to try the motors aren't in it. Um, it's actually as much as it's glorified as something that was great. I think it's, it's Far obsolete by now. Like I think. Well, yeah. <laughs> lucky, I think Lucky would win eight or ten times. Oh, really? Surely. Yeah. Fair play. But it's, it's um, you know there were a lot of people when we ran Z uh, Ziggy Junior at Robo Games. There was some um, a lot of people that have been around for a long time that uh, that you know uh, appreciated the Ziggy name and people are like, hey, there's some magic to that and. Uh, I guess there were people online saying, like, hey, why don't they run that machine at BattleBots? Ziggy seems much better than Lucky. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what you're saying? <laughs> it's like that I meme, mean, corporate wants you to find the difference between these two pictures. They're the same yeah. picture. <laughs> I mean, we, we're certainly, you know, a, a sucker for a nostalgic name. So seeing Ziggy fighting again was very sort of, I don't know. Well, it, a, a Ziggy. A Ziggy yeah, Junior, a, right? a, a Ziggy <laughs> yes. was fighting, and, and that, that, you know, the good chemicals were released after that. So that was, yeah. it was nice yeah, to see. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm very yeah, glad that you, you did it. So, yeah. There's like this in between time where we didn't have BattleBots on TV. So y you got YouTube videos, you got, you know, vet reports. And the, we, you're, you're clawing for any information for any bot to coming through. There's maybe, maybe there's like a, a part of me that understands why I like Gigabyte so much because I watched it, you know, for, I watched Megabyte for years, yeah. you yeah, know. Yeah with event uh, recaps and stuff like that. Like, it's just, 
and it was cool to see that finally jump to the silver screen. Uh, you know, it's it, it's it's just it's just nice. You know, it's nice to see the yeah. continuity as it's as yeah, it's that's going. Another so. good example, actually, Gigabyte, Megabyte, and and people fans that look at it today and go, oh, the horizontals are obsolete or whatever they said, right? But mm-hmm. anybody that's fighting Tombstone or Gigabyte knows that like they you're, it. Getting, mm-hmm. you're getting destroyed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our matches that we've had against horizontals, I, I really like our setup for horizontals. Uh, but we fought Megabyte back in the day, and like we we went in. And we had a big titanium wedge, and they hit the corner of it, and they took the entire core of the machine off it. I'm like, oh, we have to do something <laughs> better. And we've improved on that. Like, we have a better game now for horizontals. And I think, you know, seven out of ten times we can win a match like that. But mm-hmm. if it goes three minutes, it's likely that after two minutes, things are off and it's getting ugly for us, right? So. <laughs> The damage no, will accumulate over time. Yeah. Yeah. There's less wheels touching the floor. <laughs> yeah. So, like Matt said, when we fought Triton, we won just in time. Uh, mm-hmm. We fought late. It was a short fight. We like took some superficial damage, but it was over in like, a hit and a half, right? So, but any of those guys hit really hard, right? And then um, the question, the first question about Robo Games was, you know, best memory of Robo Games, and uh, we had gone with Ziggy for a number of years, and uh, you know, this was. Position where we are, where we're on the bubble, and maybe we're in the middle of the pack now. But we're sort of on the outside, trying to work our way up the ladder. I, I'm, I like that. That's where we were with Ziggy, and we were an underdog. And I remember watching this Delphi forum back then. But there were a lot of fans saying, "Oh, Ziggy's doing okay at Robo Games, but they would never have a chance against Vladdy, or they would never have a chance against the Judge, right?" Mm. And uh, <laughs> I thought, I think we'd have a chance. I'm like, I'm not sure we'll win, but. I'm Pretty sure we have a chance, right? And um, John Maladnik actually was one of our first fans, and he, he believed in the design more than anybody on the team, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I think you have a chance. When we fought, like, uh, Sewer Snake, for example, mm-hmm. we were able to have been there. It's like, oh, okay, you know what? I think our, our design is actually valid. Like, that validated us. And then I think the next year we fought um, three fights, but we ended up fighting Little Blue Engine, and then we, like, oh, yeah. on a Friday, a regulator broke, like, our one drive motor wasn't working. We had all these impairments. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'm fighting Gladiator the next day, and I was driving. I'm going to fight Gladiator, and I've got all these faults with the machine that I know are terrible. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to say, like, I wanted to give up because I'm like, there's no way I'm going to go and beat this legend with half of our drivetrain not really working. We don't have a regulator, so we all have almost no hits. Mm-hmm. Uh, crap, right? And so we went in against. Uh, Gladiator, this is another thing is um, our wedge was mounted fixed, not pinched. So when we mounted, mm-hmm. we put it on the floor, the wedge was off the ground. And Gladiator's fast, faster than us, tight to the ground, and our wedge is off the ground. And I've got one drive train that it's not really working. That I, I've yeah. got yeah. seven shots at best. And I'm like, I have to win this match against this legend, and everyone said that we're going to lose. And I think mm-hmm. we're going to lose. right? Um, but we were just patient. That was like if you look at it, it's probably the most boring match that I've ever driven. But it's also the most, uh, I'd say, my best match ever in terms of driving. And Gage was driving, and I watched him from BattleBots way back when. And they've got a machine with four times the power that we have, straight line power. And he comes at you full speed all the time. And I, I literally just pointed in the middle of the arena. Uh, I learned that from Xander in you know, T-minus Vegas. That's what Jake does. But I was in the middle of the arena, and if I went forward, my wedge would come off the ground. So actually, when they came at us, I actually tried to back up a little bit, and they never got under us in three minutes. And we were able to win. But that was one of those matches where, like, I, I had all these deficiencies, and we were able to win, right? So that was like, oh, my God, I can't believe we did it. And um, they got stuck on the side. It was kind of a chintzy win. Like, they got off at 11 seconds, and people like booing, like, oh, that wasn't a win. So they let us... They said, do you want to go again? I'm like, well, as long as I don't lose the, the win, I'll keep fighting. Right? And so we fought them with the rest of the, the three minutes and with, I don't know, like 30 seconds left. I, I had almost kind of like the match with Triton. We had almost no air left. And they were against the wall. And we were able to flip a super heavyweight on the other side of the IP, which oh, I think like might it. have been the first time that's happened. And mm-hmm. Gladiator was there. So it was like, if, if it wasn't definitive, now it is. Yeah. And so that was like, wow, we beat Gladiator. Right? That was like, for me... It was the first. It was the first validation, right? And then we fought the judge the next day. I won't go play by play for that, but that that match with the judge was like 
I'm like, oh my god, that worked, right? And uh, the first match against Gladiator, I was conservating the air, didn't want to waste it. The second match, full ball. I just went balls out, and I'm like, I got to win this in seven shots, and I think we let five go in a minute. And we were literally out of air. If he would have kept going, it would have gone. Yeah, he had not have somebody in your ear say, oh, we're out of air. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. Out of air, yeah. Mark. Good job. <laughs> uh, once, uh, yeah, that air's gone. That's it. <laughs> Are you happy now? We're out of air. Are you happy now? We're out of air. Uh, yeah. That's so good. Yeah, but it's cool so, to see that validation. Uh, I mean, there's, yeah. there's a lot of really great fights uh, from, from your Robo Games run. And it's, it, it, was, it was cool. To, it, it, it still is cool to see Lucky back on the big screen. Um, yeah. What, it's 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 one of the remaining four bar lifting launchers flipper, you know. It's because we, we we don't see biohazard anymore. So you're like you're like it. <laughs> yeah, the uh, on the heavy seat. mostly over. You know, Banshee mm-hmm. came back this year with pneumatics. Pneumatics yes. is hard to do because it's big, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I guess the punchline there with with Robo Games and and Ziggy and position we're in now. I mean, this is a game of getting better. Uh, yes. There's no there's no, no position called the best. Um, you see it with, um, you know, Tantrum last year, uh, a couple of years doing better and better, and then they, they had a losing record this year. Uh, mm-hmm. They were in the round of 32, so you never know what happens. But um, it's it's a real uh, game of advancement. As soon as you have uh, an implement that works, uh, somebody, somebody's smart is coming up with a counter for that. So there isn't mm-hmm. an end game where you say, this is it. And, um, you know, we, we've been here before where we were, considered like an underdog we're still an underdog but with ziggy we got over them and i just feel like we're we just gotta keep plugging away i think the machine's uh fun to watch we have a lot of good fans that like to watch this and uh i think we deliver some pretty uh fun fun matches so still here to have fun and, oh yeah, yeah. And that's, well, that's, that's the main thing absolutely absolutely should we talk about some fights yeah, let's go. Do I feel it. like we did like a mini like Legends podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was enjoying saying back and forth. Absolutely, listening, you know? absolutely. Now back to the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what? We, 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 we'll, yeah. I'll tell you what, if if there's enough comments for it, we'll do it. We'll do a second one with you guys, and we'll do a full deep dive into Ziggy, Lucky, and everything else. How about that? Mm-hmm. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. In the meantime, I mean, we, we actually. Because the first fight is, is is you. It's against it, Kovar. Yeah. <laughs> Begin with a bang, yeah. right? This this is the fight that I think Bill Dwyer said at the end of the fight. It sounded it, it sounded like an M80 went off in the box. And Bill Dwyer. There, there Bill was Dwyer. A tank, and then there wasn't. Yeah, Bill Dwyer said that. Yeah, of yeah. course. Was he there? Who was he there? Bill Dwyer was our hype you, man. How do you not know this? I, was, so I wasn't there. I wasn't. I'm I sure wasn't we told you. This, this is I'm your fault for getting married. We told you. <laughs> so yeah, Bill Dwyer was there for the full record. He was the right. hype man for the whole audience. He did a big game of whose head is bigger than his. It's, it's a whole thing. <laughs> Never yeah. wore not my many hat. People, How could you not way. wear my hat? Your hat I think you yeah. scared him away, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he saw the red fur and thought, oh, crazy guy. I shaved elbow. What did he do? But yeah, no. Um, yeah, talk us through it because this is loud. This this is yeah quite clearly. You know, you look at the four robots that you've got. Cobalt is the one that stands out as oh my god, this is a hard fight because you know last year top eight. Talk about it. Exactly what you were saying was like so we were going through and you know Mark knows all the bots you know mm-hmm. through and through, and we're going through them and then. Um, you know, we're talking to people and he's like, okay, he goes, I like our schedule. You know, this year looks pretty good. It's going to be tough. You know, we're going to have to game plan, but it's going to be tough. And then, you know, every time, and then you kind of like get through them and then you see Cobalt and then like we were mentioning it to other people in the pits and they're like, ah, good luck. <laughs> they're like, ah, good, good luck. Enjoy the rebuild. Rest in pieces, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um they are they are very very good top tier bot um and and it was kind of one of those things where bark will say you know either we're gonna we're gonna go three minutes of them or we're gonna come back in a in a basket you know and uh it was the latter on on that one uh unfortunately i wish we would have gone more with them um i would say first and foremost the 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 quickness that that happened was my fault um just a driving error i overcorrected when they ended up how because i always watch the other bot like i actually don't watch lucky i watch the other bot and then i drive lucky accordingly like i don't actually drive lucky with my with my eyes kind of with my peripherals Mm -hmm. and uh, because i'm always looking at what they're doing and then make small corrections so 
when There's I not first many drivers that do. I think the the only other team I've heard talk about that is the Quantum team, mm -hmm. and they yeah. they are also professional RC. Yeah. I think they pilot stuff, but they do drive yeah, racing. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. So always looking ahead. I'll I'll say even in even in racing when I'm doing stuff, I know where every car is on the on the track and what they're doing as well as watching mine and driving mine. Um, and how fast they are, my opponents and stuff like that. I'm always looking everywhere else kind of, but my own vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, and same thing goes, goes with this. So what I had seen them do is, is, uh, cause when you're coming out of the boxes and you have a big center divider there, what I saw them do is they ended up turning right. So I went, I went left. Well, it was kind of in the blind spot and, and it happening so quick. Um, that when I corrected left with, with lucky, they ended up coming back when they saw my side, they corrected and then powered up and then, and then just, just obviously hit us, puncture the tank, um, bang. and bang, you know, and it, it was, I think probably two revolutions in the slow-mo of them, one taking off our armor and then two hitting our tank. And then I honestly lucky was dead right then uh but it's just instinctual you know to to pop him back over again um and that's what i did so i popped him back over again and then once i realized you know everything was kind of uh what it was it was life support you know over um and i pretty much like mark and i were talking like stop 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 and and mark yeah. went over and and talked to them and said hey hey we're done you know that's that's it mm -hmm. you know um and and it's one of those things where i don't know I, I would like to i would like more time with them i don't know if it would have ended any differently or or what have you or if a, a tank would have been punctured um but i would say that that maneuver and and the quickness that lucky went out was 100 percent my fault driving error you know and and them on fair play you know they they read lucky properly and, and my mistake and was able to capitalize on that. So the, their drivers did really well mm -hmm. uh, yeah. as well. So you, you still had a few flips left in the tank in the pre-charge area <laughs> that machine. Luckily they didn't, they didn't gas that completely. So you still had a couple flips, but at that point you were out of gas, you were out of air. That was it. Good job, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that, that, that's not on you. I mean, I, I, I appreciate you guys. Owned it up. I appreciate you kind of, own it up to the driving error but i mean it's it's cobalt man it is I think, it, I, mean, I think they say i can't remember i don't remember but yeah dave and sam yeah, they, they've won they won robot wars they nearly won robot wars three times they won yeah. Yeah. The previous featherweight champions you yeah know, they're, they're, they're good China. they're very good <laughs> they're, they're, yeah they're, they're decent you know they're they've got that similarity to minotaur times. where there's like they've won everywhere but battle bots mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah, yet you know, who knows if they do I mean, do it this year? There's a reason I backed them at the start of the season to win. Um, <laughs> I, I do, I do feel it's slightly looking, smug, but I mean, quite good with with three yeah. decent wins and one very decent loss. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, also, I, I extremely good loss. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Good I mean, it's not good for us. We're good for the fans. We're good for Cobalt, right? That was one of the most spectacular matches I've seen. I think yeah, it's probably, yeah, definitely. If not the match I mean, of the season, one of them, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, but I mean, for this fight, like. Jeb and Steve can uh, attest like this was the loudest noise we this, heard. This wasn't a yep. noise you hear. This is a noise you feel. You felt. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> my stomach turned many times when I heard the noise, and you're like, "Oh, that's not good." Um, mm. <laughs> and yeah, we were talking just before the podcast, and you were saying that they could hear it like back in the pits as well. Yeah, yeah. I think also, I, I think oh, yeah. I saw the episode and I saw my face afterwards. You know, obviously, you don't look at your own face. And I saw my face, and I was like, I was like, oh, what, just what, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Mark, that whole time I'm saying that he jinxed me because he's like, ah, we've never had a tank puncture, Matt. We never. Had... I'm like, thanks. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Also, great. how how cool of a feature is this thermal cam in the corner of the box? Oh, it, what a I, what I a saying cool visual. If it hadn't paid for itself already, this shot alone was was enough because it's just like the box is cool the box is cool the box is hot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the box yeah. is way hotter than what was in that tank <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely um we did actually have a, a separate question for this fight in particular which comes from uh user guff on discord um who mm -hmm. had what a name and they ask uh how much did lucky cost to repair oh. after its fight with cobalt or do, do you have a, a roundabout figure do you reckon or was it kind of a 
a one part swap or is it was there more carnage inside we don't usually damage things inside i was bragging about that before this match but uh <laughs> that one hit uh i mean not even accounting for our time in things like the frame was trashed the uh pneumatic tank was trashed the electronics box above that was bent and trashed so i mean just in like direct cost was probably five or six thousand Ooh, my goodness. We uh, we show up with a pile of parts, though, for a reason. So. Yes. I mean, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, like, Matt said he's not a fighter. I'm not a fighter either, but I, I do watch MMA or UFC and things. And, like, like these kinds of things, you know, as, as a nerd, I like this game. Because, like, if we had that happen and we were fighters, like, that could be, like, the equivalent of permanent brain damage. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, for us, yeah. it's like, okay, it sucks. It hurts your ego. You put a new thing on the pile of machines, and, and you're ready to go, right? So it's um, it's expensive, but it's uh, it's not hurting you physically. It's not going to cause Alzheimer's early. Yeah, you know? well, I it's, suppose it's, you're not going to punch somebody, and their, their lipo comes out, you know. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> no, no physical, no physical damage, but emotional and financial damage, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, normally, we also talk about future fights. We won't talk about yours just yet. We'll save that right to the very end. However, we can actually now talk about Cobalt's next fight, and uh, I mean, it's it's this, these guys. It's Monsoon. It's an interesting. I know, one. I know. It's an interesting one. Uh, I don't think you know them, Sam. You know, the a little no. known team. No, right? yeah, yeah <laughs> not, never, not not nearby. Never heard of them before in my life. We, we never got paint for them, and didn't get the right paint or anything like no. that. They, they described it as Thomas the Tank Engine blew the paint, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ran the Vegas out of their paint. When you engine. ask a colorblind person to go and find the same shade of blue, <laughs> as blue you're going to end up with a different shade of blue. Okay? It was close enough. It was close enough. Um, I can't tell the difference. Close, like, <laughs> close enough. It, the, the fight's going to be an exciting one. You know, yeah, one of them for is going to... Sure. You know, you I, did, I, Tor did Toro I do and think... Carbide ever fight? I don't no, think they did. No, 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 no. With, with Tears, respect to Toro and, and nuts, of course. So, with respect to Toro, yeah. it was never in Carbide's league, bless it. But no. Monsoon definitely is in Cobalt, so it'd be interesting yeah. to see how they fare. I don't know. You you go all the way to the states, you end up fighting another Brit. I know, right? <laughs> I know. I'm out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear me. Um, uh, who knows? They might have a chance. Uh, they might not. I mean, it's 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 either going to be a long out drag out drag out fight, or it's going to be over in ten seconds. Yeah. Uh, so it's that that's gonna be it's gonna be scary. It's gonna way. be good to see. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of cleanup afterwards. I I, I would imagine. Absolutely. Lucky meanwhile. Lucky meanwhile. Oh we, well, I said we'll get to it a little bit later on. But you have got hypershock. But we'll, I said we'll go into yeah. a little bit more detail as your <laughs> your thought process to it. Jevin's uh, a little excited at the end. No, Jevin is from from the <laughs> last fight onwards. Jevin is cacking his pants every time <laughs> they come onto the stage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Well, we'll get to that a bit later on. In the meantime, we'll talk about fight number two. Mm -hmm. Which is the well, two more flippers in in law, I, I guess, because there's not many of them out there. There's nope. uh, right. two of them are in this, this fight. Season. Yeah. Um, Blip and Banshee. Banshee is kind of said kind of similar in this kind of mechanism that you use. You know, you both using pneumatics. I suppose that's where the similarity really ends. But Blip yeah. radically different. Yeah, uh, with the hippo snout. I don't know how else to describe that. You know, it's a strange add-on, isn't it? Yeah. I I get the logic. The nose that's on the front. Yeah, the <laughs> the, the snout. I, I do. I like it in a sense that it was a nice idea because the problem that Blip has is because they have to spin up their their internal flywheel, they always wheelie whenever they try and drive anywhere, so they, they have to kind of get underneath first and then spin up and then flip. And it, it's a big... Whereas, you know, Matt, yourself, you can just fire the weapon and it goes. Mm -hmm. Blip can't do that because it, it doesn't yeah. drive quite the They have the to build way. that potential energy. It's not just yeah. stored. <laughs> and... You know, it's a nice way of kind of catching Banshee, holding it on top, and then eventually using the flipper. Yeah. Um, that we didn't, didn't. That never happened, though. No. <laughs> no because they didn't get under. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, they struggled to for a very long time. Um, I think the snout giveth and the snout taketh away in this one because it, uh -huh. it just kept biting heads with Banshee at that point. I mean, when you look at how this fight goes on a judge's scorecard one robot manages to just about use its weapon the other doesn't get a good flip off and therefore you, you've got a winner it's a clear call. Um, i mean yeah. I, I have to ask um i think this probably is a question more for mark than yourself matt but like you know when you watch a robot like blip which is a similar if not the same concept you know it's a flipper ultimately you know and you've been building flippers for 20 years as you said when you see something like blip in the arena like what what, what you know does it give you ideas as to you know maybe we could do something like this or is it just does it scare you 
No, I, I talked with Aaron at length about Flip, and, and that's an amazing machine. I, I'm i pretty good mechanically. I, I can follow what they did, but the fact that they got it together and they got it working, to me, it's, and it's, underweight. it's an incredible, <laughs> incredible piece of engineering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then the, the ground game, too, it's, it's one of those things where uh, it is frustrating as a driver when you don't get under the other guy. Mm-hmm. But we're playing a game where everybody is doing their darndest to get under everybody. And and if you're getting in there and you're getting neutralized, it's the game we're all playing, right? Mm-hmm. So there's no system that anybody has that I think will get under the other guy every time. Mm-hmm. Hydra is probably the closest, but um, when they're really tight to the ground, they're not able to go forward very well. We all have the same struggles. Yeah. In the floor every single scene. So, right? You know, those matches that are, you know, one guy neutralizes the other one. Um, you see it in boxing sometimes where the highest build car looks like it's going to be amazing, but they're so well matched, it becomes a little bit of a dud. Mm-hmm. Uh, if no one can really out maneuver the other person. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, that it happens sometimes. And I think it's just, it's going to be bound to happen mm-hmm. once in a while anyway. If we play this game. Yeah, absolutely. The, you, 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 I mean, all this, all this trying to get too low. Somebody's got to go over the top at some point and just, you know, where's the next like f- flying battle bot with something that just punches you down? Like, if you want to go to the floor, I'll put you there. I believe um, that's Ripperoni when it turns off the flywheel, right? There you go. <laughs> um, it, it, it is an endless battle. Uh, it really and, is. And, and maybe, maybe it kind of it has it. It hasn't hurt the sport. It just it's we're we're at an impasse a little bit with forks. Uh, mm-hmm. where I, I feel like there's an evolution to be had somewhere, somehow, and nobody's thought of it yet. Uh, but it's, Thagmizer. you know. Thagamizer. <laughs> <laughs> I love Thagamizer. It's, it's, a, it's a wacky thing, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's brilliant. But it's a counter for the board game, right? It really is. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Banshee at one and three doesn't make the cut. Blip at two and two does. Uh, mm-hmm. They have a tricky fight uh, in the round of 32. Uh, against Sawblaze. Yeah. Um, Before we do move on to talk about that, there is one more thing from this fight that we do need to discuss. <laughs> David, I, I believe you have something to say Uh-oh. to Greg Munster specifically. Well, <laughs> I mean, part one of uh, David has cut from uh, this episode. Like, We've had a running joke that David just isn't at BattleBots. The yeah, amount I don't that exist. He's, he's not in shot. You see yeah. me, you see Steve. You very rarely see David. Yeah, David is MIA for the majority <laughs> of recording, despite the fact I'm there the entire time. Mm-hmm. But for this fight, we're in high five. Um, <laughs> Blip team come through. We'd already spent some time with uh, the Seems Reasonable team. We'd, yeah. It was a nice trip in the, the pits. Had tans from running around. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. Oh, no, they and, did cut this. Yes. And Aaron, because I was wearing the Blip t-shirt at the time, Aaron grabbed the t-shirt at the time saying, this is the best t-shirt of BattleBots, and that got cut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was just a whole intro. Yeah, they just but, cut the intro yeah. completely on that one. More on that later. <laughs> yeah, more on that later. <laughs> That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Da- David, the second one. Yep. David didn't actually get, go to BattleBots, as it turns out. Mm. Yeah, it turns out okay. I got married, weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> Congrat- congratulations, David. I'm so proud yeah, of you. Yeah, I'd love to know who it is, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dearie me. Um, yeah, Sawblaze, tough ass for Blip, I think. Mm. Yeah, that's a really tough draw. It's, it's just a size mismatch. Uh, you say that. And... Tantrum has fought it before. However, that was Dylan driving, not Aaron. So, or was no, it? Was no, it was Aaron. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron was, was driving. driving. Aaron. Okay, so yeah. Aaron has previous driving a small robot against Sawblaze, and therefore, mm. does he have the advantage? Who knows? But it had a little spinny bit on it. This yeah. one doesn't have the spinny bit. I mean, it has the spinny, spinny bit on the inside. inside. <laughs> yeah. You know, but... I mean, chaps. You, I mean, you fought Sawblaze a long time ago. Now, seeing the evolution of that robot, I mean, what what do you reckon of that as a machine these days? Hello. Are you pointing that out? Yeah, I mean, okay. you 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 fought you fought Sawblaze before, right? Haven't you? We've never fought Sawblaze. Scorpio. Oh, Scorpios! Yeah, oh, yeah. that was yeah. close. The other brother and Saw. Yeah, Sawblaze. Uh, Jamo's another one of those guys that's um, he's always improving. He's so good. He's tactically, he's very good, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think he's number one or number two in terms of driving versatility, right? To drive yes. against the opponent and capitalize on their mistakes and, and take the game to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll say this when he fought Aaron, when Tantrum, I think that was quarterfinals, semifinals, uh, oh, finals, yeah. 
and he got schooled by Tantrum. Mm-hmm. And that I've never seen that happen before with Jamie. And you know he doesn't think that well. So no, I, I was, I was gonna say Jamie was gonna have Jamie was gonna have something to prove, I think, in that next match. Lodged in this head for, for two years waiting for a yeah. chance, right? <laughs> uh, we'll see how he gets on in the round of thirty two. Uh, next up is a, I mean, hmm. I've never felt more mm, of indeed. Team Monsoon than in this fight. <laughs> so uh, as David alluded to earlier, we we got to be in the pits that morning and we'd, we'd done interviews with uh, the Tantrum team, still yet to come out. Um, Source it out, Jeff. interview with the Monsoon team, still yet to come out. Um, but after we did our little chat with the Monsoon team and after we bought them more paint, um, <laughs> we, uh, they said, Oh, if if you're going around the pits, just go and have a look at the death uh, the death roll table. Just see if they're running any forks or anything. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, right. So, we we the scouts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, so, was. We, I don't know around, we did, just, this was going on. Like, <laughs> we did over a death roll. <laughs> Obviously, never running any any forks they are. setup. They no. death roll, and so just go back and go. No, <laughs> <laughs> they got their forks right next to the knives and spoons. And yeah. then uh, Monsoon brings out a really. Weird but cool setup for this fight. The snoot, yeah. yeah. The I snoot. mean, directly inspired, I believe, from UK Beetleweight Snappy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Sure. Craig Croucher has had an influence on Battlebot design. Who would have thought? <laughs> what a guy. It's my teammate. Um, <laughs> this fight was very short, very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Couple of hits. Death Roll, I think, dies on one side, and then I think just kind of gets backed into a corner and. That's it, really. There was Part a, of me thinks that they... Because at this point, they've got a reasonably decent record of two and two mm-hmm. uh, if if they lose the fight, which they do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it was a case of damage limitation. And so they you, you choose when to, to stop driving. If, if they were already down a side of drive, it's going to be tough to recover from that in your fight. Obviously, big weapon on it, you could. But ultimately, Monsoon was there ready to to hit again if needs be um and so at that point you kind of go do we do we count our losses and just say yeah we'll we'll get into the bracket as is thank you oh, is, is, is there a strategy to that um matt and mark you know just kind of accepting defeat and just be, I, I mean we, we kind of saw it against cobalt yourselves but like is it a fine art of like okay we're, be- we're better off just stopping and letting them win the fight yeah i, I think that uh a little bit of it you want to make sure that you're still making good tv so even when i flip back over we were driving a little bit but once we saw once i you know uh i wasn't out of ram and in, in my head and i'm starting to catch up a little bit i'm buffering i'm like oh where we are gone um and i think i think you have to come to that realization that uh once that happens it's it's over and you know the, at that time you're just saving hours and a lot of money um uh, in in time and energy and everything else and and heartache like it's you're not going to go any further you know it may as well not be a punching bag mm-hmm. um so yeah with with that fight i saw they kind of got a hit off that bounced around got into the corner drive was down and and that was it and the monsoon team's been doing really really well i, I love how their how their um their sides articulate mm-hmm. um up and down so that's it's a pretty pretty cool design um yeah. so yeah it's uh like like Mark said, I think even in that match it was five to ten grand. But every time you got to look at these bots and with these spinners, it's uh, I, I I've I've said this when uh, you know telling people what it's like fighting them. I'm like think about sticking your hand in a garbage disposal. I'm like yep. that's basically what it's like fighting a bird. <laughs> I'd rather know. That's that's yeah. what it is. And I think I'd have a hand left. You know? yeah. yeah. So you get back a nub. So like yeah. you want to save as many fingers as you can. You know what I mean? So it's um, it's it's expensive putting your hand back together surgically. So yeah, I would, I would say, say. Uh, yeah, I would say it's uh, it's it's the same thing. And and oh. um, with battle bots right now, you have to you have to it's it's it, they're very very powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 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 crazy, and and everything's custom. You can't go to Walmart, you know, to go and pick up a new part for Lucky. You know, mm-hmm. so everything's you custom. Every you can get paint. It's got Say to be that, in, uh, but you can't get the right paint. You got to get uh, what was it? Thomas the Tank Engine Blue. That's, you know? that, that's, that's it. Some premium paint. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Brilliant. Exactly. One, one so. Comment on the same topic though, too is um, 
if, if, if our match, if, if that had happened really late, and we let's say we we're winning for the first two minutes and that happened, mm-hmm. we would have kept going. And it, yeah. it's like we might get destroyed in the last thirty seconds, but if we're close or ahead on points, we're going. You want to make right? it to the belt. Right? That's a yeah. risk value uh, assessment. And then yeah. this matchup, though, too, I'll say monsoon, like they're large, large verts. Mm-hmm. And I noticed they did a lot of that this year, where it was like on like, mm-hmm. where in, in previous years you'd see like end game with something squishy. And like it yeah. just seemed like, oh, let's watch end game beat somebody up. But this year, the a lot of the top spinners faced top spinners, or, yeah. you know, like Star Child kind of looks like huge. Yep. They went against each other. It was like that. We, we that really like, hope that BattleBots got this out of their system this season, that they had enough like on like. You know, it's yeah, tight matchups and yeah, tight, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But certainly, that the the seeding with like the power rankings coming into the top, I think it has helped kind of get yeah. up some new uh, good uh, fights overall. There's been a couple of so. iffy ones, but yeah, yeah, that's helped. I would agree. Um, with Monsoon, soon, obviously, we already mentioned he's going to be fighting Cobalt in the round of thirty-two. Tough match for again both teams, but I think yeah, he'd probably have to favor Cobalt in that really. Um, yeah, to be honest, Death yeah. Roll, meanwhile. Uh, has Hydra, so best ground that's, game that's in, a, in the sport versus no ground, ground, ground game, no ground game, but yeah. massive weapon reach, and we know that you hit Hydra in the right places and it's kind of done. So yeah, we saw their be... fight, their their bracket fight with their first season against Minotaur, right? Yeah, where they just mm-hmm. they got clipped that on is, the that side. That is what I was, was thinking just, back yeah. to. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like it, it's not impossible for death roll it's just very very difficult and they'll they'll need to not do what jake was talking about the other week to us which is keep driving at the flipper and expecting something hydra hysteria right yeah yeah Yeah. can't get hydra hysteria uh we'll we'll get them next time yeah we've been thrown again we'll get them next time how many next times have we been so far (laughs) a lot of next times yeah i I heard it's next week actually but oh yeah Uh, yeah, sorry there you go oh there we go that was last week (laughs) yeah of course uh well People who just listen to this are not going to get that. They're so confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> last last little... week. <laughs> Next fight is Tantrum and Whiplash. This is. Do you remember earlier in the season where I was talking about um, Whiplash fighting Hypershock? And it's two of my favorite robots, and I don't want either of them to lose. Is this the other one of those? No, no this is David's not, version. Yeah, this, <laughs> right. this is my own personal hell. It's also like, David's censorship favorite. round two. Yeah, so yes. getting back into David's censorship back round two, <laughs> right? Um, the Tantrum team have the fists off of Lego uh, Tantrum, right? And they use it to press the button, right? On the, the, Didn't the see it. Didn't see it, did we? They cut it. see them waving the fists <laughs> to the crowd before the advert break. <laughs> and then you get back from the advert break, and it's like, oh, oh, well, I guess we just hit the button in the advert break while selling whatever the hell we had on the advert. And they weren't selling Lego. The <laughs> They're not selling so, Lego. That would have been a good advertising ploy, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, w- it would have been fine. Just, just subscribe to Lego Wars on that one, you know? <laughs> yep. just, mm-hmm. But yeah, it got cut again. <laughs> Um, but a nice bit to end that story at least one of the fists did stay with the team after that so they they got gifted that but still it's uh, I I, I got cut and then I had to (laughs) enjoy watching my two favourite robots fight knowing they have a losing record well one of them was guaranteed a one and three (laughs) yeah Yeah. oh it was going all right who would have said at the start of the season one of these two would have had a a one and three record right yeah well, you look at their schedules first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> they they did. Not only did they put the t- like these two robots through the ringer throughout the season, they then decided, yeah, and, and at the end of it, we'll just put them They'll together, just fight each other, you yeah, know? Just, just end it off. I mean, they could have fought each other back in twenty twenty because yeah. if they really uh, Tantra had beaten Endgame back then, this would have been the final. Mm. But yeah, it's and same again last year with uh, Whiplash hadn't have had their issues with the Cobalt fight, right? So yeah. it's been coming, but yeah, it was it was a good fight to begin with, and then it's one round where Whiplash just knocks Tantra back into the uh, the wall, That's and it. that just snaps the chain, and then they're over, yeah. and it's once again it's we're we're back in self riser hell. Yeah, I have to and, ask. This is this is a, a actually it was a listener question, but I'm, I'm going to steal it here. Um, why are all good battlebot drivers called Matt? Because like <laughs> there's, there's there's Matt Vasquez, there's yourself, there's Matt Maxim, yeah. 
There's Matt, Matt Bales. Sp- Matt Spurk. Um, Matt. <laughs> oh, like is 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 it a thing? Or is, 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 is there a is is there a, like a running joke <laughs> whenever someone else turns up called Matt at Battle Bots? Like, oh, they're gonna be good, aren't they? Because of course they are. Yeah, just, <laughs> that's why we don't see the the um the giant bolt for best driver anymore. They just find the new Matt and go, here you go. <laughs> like the best Matt in Battle Bots, right? <laughs> yeah, it must it be some it, uh I think the name means a gift from God. So there you go. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Humble. Looking That's forward good. to the next <laughs> season where we have Macklebots. Macklebots. Um, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I mean, you have. We, you we, have we, no... we need the team of Matts versus the team of Davids. Yeah, yeah. 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 Have a David's, soul Bible right? battle. Don't, don't have USA versus the world. It's Matts versus David. So let's go. <laughs> I'll, I'll be up for that. <laughs> yep. I mean, you have you have fought Matt Vasquez now as well. Like you know, at, at Roman. Yeah, Davis. Whopper. Yeah, we yeah. did. We fought him at Robo Games. We were able to. Yeah, it was a close fight. It was seventeen sixteen. We actually thought we might have lost that one to him. So, but we did beat him uh, from judge's decision, and then we ended up beating him. We broke uh, two of his um, uh, his drivetrain gearboxes in the second fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we had a rematch with him, and then we beat him in that one. But he did not have his bird at mm-hmm. the time. But it was uh, it was uh, a, a whiplash. Mm-hmm. So. Both but points, yeah, so. I had my money on the on the robot driver called Matt. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> can't, Safe bet. Can't lose. Yeah. Can't lose. Um, yeah. Should we talk I about these, say, these two's future fights? Or would you want yeah. to say anything else, yeah. Steve? Uh, well, I'm, I'm just saying, I remember we've had Matt on in the past, and he said he's he's not as successful with having the disc on the bot. I think he's done pretty well this season, considering his matchups. Considering yeah, they, uh, this is also their big brushless change here as well. Yeah. Mm. They, they, they finally got it all working. Team. You yeah, know another what? team that had so many Brussels issues. issues. I will also say that um, Jeff Vasquez, as soon as Tantrum went over, we were in High Five Club for this fight, and you could just hear Jeff. Leave you know, it! Leave him! Leave yes. him! Yeah. <laughs> I think you could see on the other side when Dylan's trying to get it over. It's like, for like, for me. Yeah, I think background. usually, usually, I think Matt would be sporting and getting back over, but when you're facing a losing record and potentially not getting in the bracket, it was all or nothing. I mean, at least Tantrum has the advantage of being last year's champion, so may well, just with one win, get a foot in the door. But yeah, Whiplash needed this, and, and they got it. So yeah, they did. They did, they did have the missing ingredient of uh, Jason being back, you know, after, from yes. like midterms. That, that's, that's what's helped the spinner work now. I know, don't really. know that I've brought it up yet or not, but that single fork on the front of the lifter is really bugging me. <laughs> like, <laughs> throughout this whole season, it's like a narwhal. One side is like, oh, come on, please. Oh, dear. But it's yeah, giving that's me, it's giving me Sir Lancer Frog vibes, and I kind of like it. It is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, needs uh, a, a froggy uh, chair livery now. You know, just need, absolutely. Just need a second fork on the front, please. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it to Matt for next season. Um, yeah, let's talk about Whiplash's fight first. They've got Beta. Yeah, and I just know what's going to happen. I know how this fight's going to go. They're going to they're going to boots out, lads. They're going to use the boat armor, <laughs> and, it, and it'll lose. What is, but what's but the Whiplash is not a vert; it's a lifter. But, but it'll it's use got a the, on the front. It'll use the boat. David, but what is the nickname for that? Set up on beta. It's the Susan armor, I believe. Yeah, the Susan armor. Because they called, they named it after like Susan Boyle, is what Jason told us. What? Yeah, because <laughs> no it's the ugly armor. <laughs> right. That's, that's, okay. That's the, wow. that's the you know, I, do you know what? I've met Susan Boyle, and it's weird she, flex, but okay. She, she was <laughs> she was sat in front of me when I went to go and see Spando Ballet in two thousand and nine. There you go. <laughs> Another weird flex. What what a, what a yeah. reference that is. That's a that's a this, absolute... is, this is a tangent good, good you. Well done. <laughs> this is a, this getting is, back to the really armor. I, <laughs> I really I really hope he doesn't use it. But we know John. He doesn't like fox, does he? John yeah. cares too know. much about beta to use a, the normal beta setup against mm-hmm. something with a vertical spinner. Even though the vert is not the main weapon here. Yeah, we'll mm. see. We'll see. Yeah, it goes. Maybe he'll run the wedge, and we'll all look like idiots. Yep. I hope I so. Know. As for Tantrum, oh That's boy! Serious. I mean, you thought their they, their, their preseason a schedule random draw. Oh, who'd have seen this coming? Their no. preseason schedule was tough, but then they get you know they've they've gone through Minotaur, they've gone through Hydra, they've gone through Blip, Whiplash to fight Endgame. Yeah. Oh, uh, shocker! <laughs> the last Charme. two champions. Yeah, mm. that's uh, uh, in this match coming. One. Definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, th- there's words ringing in my head that I won't bring up from the, the night after when we, we found out about the bracket. <laughs> uh. Leaves a bit of a sour taste in the mouth, huh? 
just yeah. a, just a bit. But I mean, with with how their seasons have gone, you can make the argument that they're they're seated kind of where they're supposed to be. They could uh, do it. Yeah, like I, both I, times I they've so. been out facing Endgame. The Endgame team have even said Tantrum is the robot that has caused them the most damage, the most problems in years mm-hmm. past. I mean, I think Rotator would beg to differ, but um, Tantrum gives them a lot of grief every time they fight, and so you never know. Third time could be the charm. Yeah, we'll have to wait. Seeing what see. they've done to to Witch Doctor to win the title last year, and then what they did to Hydra this year, just get that little spinner yeah. underneath the frame and yep. peel some parts away, and then all of a sudden the wheels aren't touching the floor anymore. Just, just no, no. It's simple. You just need Sam to predict for. I, I, think, end, to I win. think. Well, I, I, I think Endgame will win. And then problem solved, right? There you go. You know. <laughs> That's, I'm, that's I'm like, how I, they won last year. For, for, for context, they... <laughs> for context to to Matt and Mark, every time I've predicted Tantrum will will lose a fight, they then go on to have an amazing run. I, to Aaron's Hill's face, I said, "You're going to lose to Sawblaze," and then yeah, we had him on. Yeah, that was that, that was, was the first time we, <laughs> first time I ever spoke Never to him, forget. and he's like, "Yep, you're going to lose to Sawblaze, mate." And look what mm-hmm. happened. Egg on my face. I'm, I'm sure yep. you said to Alex and Ginger as well, like you're going to lose the rotator. <laughs> 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 I have a habit. We had of this. to make a lot of public apologies. Let's put yeah. it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'll have to make another one at the end of this episode, but mm. we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Yep. Yep. Moving on, we have hijinks and switchback. Was this the last fight of of, of filming? I, I remember this was close it's, to the end. It, I believe for you. it was one of the last ones. This, yeah, it was this one they, they, woke they, up. they rushed him into the arena because yeah. we were kind of getting close to the end of filming. This was the penultimate um, fight. And okay, yeah, for I remember some the end. reason, Steve predicted hijinks. <laughs> but, yeah. still, you know, you know um, the helicopter song. It's just, this, 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 this is this is the, the the sound that came to my head when you see. We spoke about the highlights spot, reel <laughs> earlier on. This this episode is full of highlights reel material because, oh my god! Yeah, switch. If Hijinx hasn't already had a bad season, this is the way to polish it off and just go. Yep. I mean, guys, you fought Switchback last season uh, when it was it was his first season, you know, and it hit pretty hard. Then, you know, w- when you watch this version, like, what's kind of what's coming to your mind? Uh, they fixed they fixed their drive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just a bit, right? It's it's just a, yeah. a a different beast. I mean, at the start of the season, I I I still probably the way the old one looks. I don't know. It's a weird thing, but I, I, the weirdness of the previous version of Switchback really does it for me. But there's no denying that this is a better package. And it is just a brutal, brutal machine. You know, the, the fact that they tore off Hijinx's weapon is, you know, no mean feat and fair play to them. I I want to know what the strategy going in, because I know that there are fights that are won and lost in the pits. What was Hijinx thinking with top armor? I and, think and they must that? have thought that, Hi- that Switchback were going to go over the top. Because they, can, they, can, they have that ability. They have that ability yeah. to do yeah. that. And it's but... the same armor that they set up for Big Deal when they were expecting like, the hammer saw in that fight as well. Mm-hmm. So Correct. that yeah. has precedent. Mm-hmm. I guess, but I just I don't know. Uh not I'm not in the I'm not in that pit. I'm not in that I'm not at that pit table. I'm not working on that, but I really I I I, I don't know. I would have maybe I would have put front bumpers on that thing because whenever Hijinx's weapon is stopped, that whole front of the bot is just a juicy spot to hit. Uh, with how long it takes for that weapon to spit up. I know they used the smaller, quote unquote, smaller weapon in this fight. Um, but uh, I, I'm not I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what I was thinking, taking hijinks in this fight. Uh, I don't think you it, were thinking. No, it, yeah. it, was, wow. it, it was close to the end. It was close <laughs> to, to the fair, end of filming. To be very wow. fair, you had just predicted Valkyrie to beat Glitch and got that right. So uh-huh. yeah, um, it, was, it was similar ish. Yeah. I think you were you were up on your woke picks and and decided that you wanted to wanted to try your luck for a second round and it did not yeah. pay off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Do we or think this is the last time we see hijinks? I think something's got to change. Yeah. So at least they, need in this to, they need to look at yeah, look at something drastic because I mean you they've won what one fight this season or uh, yeah one fight against yeah. Bristol one and. Yeah, it, it wasn't the most convincing win either, to be fair. I mean, obviously Big Deal had a weird setup for that fight. It's not what they yes, wanted they to go in with. Mm. But um yeah, it that something's gotta change with hijinks, I think, for them to come back it, even to maybe be selected. I don't know, but it's um, one where I'd imagine they'd like to go to like the proving grounds uh, yeah, that battle definitely. this year. And I mean show they can still 
do it. Baby. Yeah. Just to get some more R and D time, because I feel yeah, like definitely. every time we see this robot, there's something different on it, and it just ha- isn't panning something out once the box running. stores close. Mm. Yeah, I really mm. want it to succeed because it, as we've said multiple times, every every time it's had a loss this season, we've we've come on here and said, look, this is a really cool looking robot. It's a great concept. There are bits of it that work superbly well. There are just these things that keep happening to it that. Maybe you can prevent. Maybe you can't. I don't know. I'm it's, sitting it's here the in my armchair. There's a pattern, and... though, isn't there? Yeah, mm-hmm. there is. Its first and... season was its best season. I've I've, yeah, I've yeah. gone back and watched its its first season. It's th- those fights were still pretty good. That weapon spinning up fast. Uh, drive mm. not perfect, but it got better as it's this, got a, as the season a lot went of on. talk in that weapon. Yes, like even when yeah. it's not up to full speed to get robots away from it, it need only turn on and start pushing the robot away with the spinner to get that up to speed. Mm. Absolutely. And, you know, the the rear wedge we've seen has upset a lot of people. I don't know whether it's just a game of strategy they need to play or or what. But, yeah, I'd like to see something change. I would love to see hijinks back and working to its full potential. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they, Robots are hard. Robots are, are hard. hard. Robots, Robots are yeah. very difficult. I mean, you see Switchback come back this year. They've made the right changes and they're they're three mm-hmm. and one and going into the tournament against uh, Malice. Malice, against? Isn't it? Malice, Malice, yeah. yeah. If, if if that's if that's not a sixteen seventeen like pick 'em fight, uh, I don't know what is because both of these bots could very easily go, come through with the one coming out in pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if you just get the right hits in the right places, uh, so I'm very curious to see how that's going to go. Uh, mm. You know, I'd like to see what armor package uh, Switchback decides to use. Uh, mm. Yeah, we I mean, know sh- Malice is going to look like Malice. It's going to have yeah. corks. <laughs> Surely <laughs> you know? they've got to be aiming for like taking out the belts first, right on, yes. on Malice, and then go. From I would there. think so. Yeah, because we well, even just had peel trouble off with the, belts. Peel off the top armor. We saw yeah. um, Ozify do it. Yeah. Food for thought for those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, we say that this was all filmed last November. This is true, <laughs> right? A retro, retrospective food for thought for, for those yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> think, think on this back in time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we, we should probably bring attention to Slow and Double Tap a little bit. So I want to talk about this week's sponsor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, they, they got boxed, which I. I yeah. <sighs> Much like the ominous Shredder Bro fight, I feel really bad for the teams because obviously, you know, you work so hard to get the robots in the arena and you you get highlighted a season where... I do feel less bad yeah. about the fact that these two are both reserves and they yes. did it to them, whereas ominous and Shredder were in the main season. They're like, yeah, this, but this counts. <laughs> still, this is like one of their only times to get like screen time. And, yeah. and this is there... this is still further apologies to Craig Danby, I think. Endless <laughs> apologies to Craig Danby. So much so, I forgot I even built Slamo, and that was meant to be there in the background. So, <laughs> an extra it's just it's him. just off screen as we talk about the other robots, it's, right? It's, yeah, it's, yeah it. he's, he's, he's been uh, <laughs> blocked out by robots ruined my life this week, you know. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, this, this fight was... Let's say it wasn't a great fight. It started pretty interestingly, but as, as soon as Slamo loses a wheel, it's kind this of... Is one of the fights... This is one of the fights time. of all time. One of them all time, yep. And, yeah. we, and we should leave it right there because we've got a couple more things to talk about. Not Poor least, Craig. not least uh, the main events. I'm looking for. Who are they going to move fight in the bracket though? Sam? Yeah, we got to no. know. Before we do move on, because I, I do think it's important we talk about both of these robots because Slamo is making some decent changes and things, and it's yes. it's looking better. Um, I, I really like the look for this year's version. I really like the look for the next one. If you've seen it, there are photos mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. It's a weird Cyclops mohawk demon thing, and I like it yeah. a lot. <laughs> the character is there. Yeah. Um, Bars the colors from the uh, the uh, robotics team that he mentors. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's, mm. it's, it's very, it's, very cool. It's a really I'm nice, it's a really nice look. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he's doing proving grounds with it. So we'll yes. see how he's, it goes He's there, there for, uh, in a fortnight's time, actually. Yeah. yeah. At least next week. Actually. Now it's on the page, yeah. Mm-hmm. And a, a massive congratulations to the... Is it first robotics team or is it Vex team that he's been coaching? Uh, first, I, I, I believe. think it's first, yes. I yeah. believe it's first. But I think they, they won. That's a faux pas if you mix that up. They, they won best rookies at, at, at Global, I think. So There you yeah. go. Yeah. So yeah. Good for them. Kudos to them. Yeah. Good for them. And um, Double Tap... Uh, an, it's another not as good as their first fight, you know. It's not, but no. Then but again, they, are, they weren't fighting Doomba. Another day goes by where we see the nicer of the armors, and that's yes. always a good, <laughs> a good thing. Yeah, I, I, I am very sad that the the photo that I've used here, and the, indeed the photo on the Battlebots website, is the uh, is the welded armor, not the the regenerative armor. Like, it's the, it's really such nice a one. grunge build. Like it's 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 cool yeah. but ugly at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you can have those things together, uh, right? Yeah. 
main event. We and I am, I am conscious of, of time. We have been going for a while here. Let, let's yeah. get into it, right? Um, yep. Well, they got uh, into it. The, the show about, got into it pretty hard, yep. didn't they? More more rematches we don't need, but have anyway. Yeah, I mean that's the decider, isn't it? Well, sort of. I, I, again, I've seen comments of like, oh, they had this for Minotaur because because of last year. And I'm like. What? Uh, and honestly, are I we have... still getting comments that this is all rigged? Yeah, it really unbelievable. Are. Yeah. It really are. I mean, <laughs> the fight was great. There was a few good it hits, was. and then it so petered out. This fight yeah. is on for fight of the week, and it's one of the first main events of the season, or one of the very few main events this season that has made like fight of the week on the BattleBots YouTube channel as the first fight up. Um, I can see. I don't know. Maybe there aren't any more that are going up for this one, but who knows? Um, the bang. But... Maybe yeah. the bang. Maybe I think, the, I think, I think, the, I think the bang is going on there. We, we certainly saw it on the BattleBot socials. The, yeah, the, the but co- yeah, this co- this fight was so back and forth. Yeah. This is the fight that I wish we'd had last year, and in in the end, I was glad that we did have it. But <sighs> blimey! <laughs> <laughs> Some nice words from Marco at the end as well, and and I'm I'm, I'm just I'm just glad that the the I think the beef has now been quashed. I hope this... I hope people in the the, the negative people out there in, in the kind of community who definitely made themselves very vocal last year have got mm-hmm. a little bit of peace from this because well yeah. maybe they've got a little bit of peace maybe they've been shut up a little bit i think because yeah i think the post fight was handled with such professionalism and it is very true that the camaraderie in the pits it on on the whole is superb and everybody will help everybody and you know there there is no beef well, there's very little beef between builders um and that that's what was said here in much better words than i'm using um but yeah there there is nothing but love between these two teams and um this was a solid fight this will go down in the annals of, of as the minotaur witch doctor fight i think i think so oh man that one hit well after after witch doctor loses their they're basically token forks they get ripped off so quick by minotaur mm-hmm. uh Drums I do mean, well against forks. Does yeah. does Mike ever run forks again? I don't know. But there's one hit right after that where it, it is just flying hunts mm. Minotaur into the dead into the corner where everything goes to die. Uh, but it didn't die. KO corner, and it didn't die. It didn't die in KO corner. Uh, and I, I don't. I, I I've always liked the way that Mike has driven Witch Doctor. It's so aggressive. Mm. Doesn't matter if the bot is flipped upside down. Smoke. It, 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 it's it's just go 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 go. Uh, so, but there's a lot of really good tension at the end of this fight too, where Minotaur gets some really good pins close to the yeah. driver's box, and I think I like that. It. I like that a lot. I mean, again, yeah, Matt, as as a driver, you know, you're watching this fight, where you know, let's like, does it, does there's a part of you that admires the fact that Minotaur is, is playing for time almost and like pinning Witch Doctor against the wall. <laughs> yeah, we've we've done it as well. It's a it's a strategy. Um, we did it against. Uh, um, I believe it was, um, oh, I've lost for words, Kraken right now. Mm-hmm. So we there did it against go. Kraken where we ended up pinning him against there, waiting for time to, you know, um, clock out, back off of him, get a hit in. And, uh, yeah, it's it's one of those strategy things where you just, you're running down that clock. And, you know, obviously, uh, Minotaur's driver, he's, he's amazing. Same with Witch Doctor. And, um, you know, those, these guys are, they're top tier bots. They're very, very good. And uh, the, you use all the advantages you can when you <laughs> when your weapon's not working yeah. properly. Uh, yeah, but Matt, yeah, Matt Freitas did an Martin amazing Mountain. job pinning him. There. <laughs> Matt Freitas, <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Freitas, the, the Brazilian man. Himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Minotaur, I think, spinning up its drum at the end as well. Very clever because yeah. the... I don't think they had full full bore on that drum. No, but no, not they had point. enough to show it was still uh, working. The judges. It, Almost, I don't know whether the judges because they don't need to see it up to full speed. They just need to see it move basically and, it, and move move yeah. freely, and it, it did exactly that. Um, and which shot's you know, weapon was broken by Witch that Doctor's point? Was down, and I think that's part of what swung it in the end because mm-hmm. this this fight was a coin toss, honestly. Yes. Um, of who could have won it? Um, yeah. Are you surprised that there was no appeal used? That maybe you can look at the fight. save it for the tournament. Yeah. They're save they're both going the into tournament. the tournament. You know, <laughs> yeah, you, one of them is now way. number one seed. I'll say you're going to get in the tournament either way. It doesn't really matter. Correct, Just save yes. it. Um, Minotaur but, won. But, yeah. 
yeah Th this is a this this was a fight for which quarter of the bracket are you going to command basically yeah yeah uh Minotaur so. getting the one and they fight fusion our little fireworks box yeah I, that's going to be a little tricky uh fusion a very underrated 32c they've had a terrible schedule this year uh they've had, and they've... They've had a really good showing though i feel and yeah. i think they've been done dirty as 32 but yeah we'll save i'm that sure we'll a... get onto that for we'll another say, we'll save that in another for another podcast uh which doctor yeah. at three they end they end up with jackpot again not a nice draw but i think yeah. a winnable one for which doctor i think mm. it, yeah. something that's got more reach than them mm. by quite a margin so we'll be curious to see how that all, how that one goes remains to be seen whether jeff's managed to fix the spin-up issues so. yes also, before we finally like finalize this fight, I do very much like the fact we I don't we didn't know at the time when they're doing post fight interviews which doctor uh, Andrea turns to her side and they have their their new friend on the team Will uh, that was Make a Wish mm -hmm. uh, so he oh. he chose to be on the team with which doctor that was his wish uh, and that was that was very really cool. cool very very, very cool nice indeed yeah love to see that and uh, yeah. credit to the witch doctor team as well for you know giving him a a nice time I hope yeah. absolutely now. We've mentioned everyone's next fight in the bracket except for one team, and that is Matt and Mark we, we, yourselves. We touched on it slightly. We did. Uh, one of us touched quickly. on it slightly. <laughs> I found a hat. You are Drew against Hypershock. You are the 15 seeds, which is a very good achievement. And then you see Hypershock as, as your fight as seed 18. Um, what were your kind of first... Well, first of all, how, how, how were you feeling about getting into the bracket itself and then knowing that you got Hypershock. Yeah, yeah I'll think, comment on oh, that. Yeah. Oh, do you want to go back? Go ahead. No, go for it, buddy. Yeah, sure. So I think um, even going back to Cobalt, um, it's one of those matches where uh, we had a game plan and uh, one mistake and, and they capitalized on it. And uh, it's that kind of game, right? Uh, I think we have a setup that we have together uh, you haven't seen it yet, but there's a different fork configuration. We talked about doing it for Cobalt, and uh, we put it together for this match. You've actually seen, uh, if you watch the uh, Robo Games, we ran it for a couple of matches at Robo Games. So it's a different configuration. Hasn't been on this show yet, but it's um, it's a different setup. And in that spirit of trying new things, um, you know, we were trying something different. And I think it's an evolving game. So I, I think with the right setup, uh, it's a match we can win. I think the, the Cobalt match is another match that we can win. And even going back to, you know, Matt's comments at the start saying, like, verts are hard. Uh, yeah. If you reverse one match to the one you just watched with, you know, Witch Doctor and Minotaur, uh, it's a really hard match for both of those guys, too. Verts are hard. It's just the way it is. It's mm -hmm. not a cake block. And even if we have the best configuration, it's never going to be a, an easy win or a cake block. And it's, you're always in jeopardy and getting ripped apart. So, you know, this is the same as that. Uh, it's going in, driving square to them, keep our front end at them. And um, we want to make sure that we pick the fights and we we manage the tempo. That's it. Yeah, yeah most most definitely getting into the bracket, I think, is uh, that's our main goal. I, I don't know if Lucky had really made it uh, before our last two seasons. I think we were 24 or 25 last season. Uh, this season, we're... 15 so improvements and and all that uh, the entire team's been doing has been amazing and yeah going up against hypershock will bales and you know they're legendary they have a really good team um you go over and look they've got like seven hypershocks chilling there you know <laughs> Uh, well, you ready. guys were like opposite each other near enough what you think in the yeah. we were yeah we were kind of like sort of diagonal, pretty close yeah. yeah yeah so we're you know looking over there and they're super cool and everything and uh yeah they they play the game very well and again another vert to to go up against and like mark said we had a we had a new strategy um going up against them which uh everybody's gonna see and i could tell you it's gonna be a good fight um whether it goes one way or the other it is a very very good fight and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, the, their machine is quick. Um, they, the main thing is, is to try and get them on their back because they don't really have a really good self rider. So they kind of bounce around the, the arena. Um, so the main thing is to, is to get a good, a good flip in and then a, a couple more. But uh, they're obviously much faster than us. So we have to be smart. Um, 
but it's uh it's a tough matchup for us obviously but if you get into the you know the world championships top 32 they're all going to be tough matchups mm-hmm. yes. so and we have to prepare for that so um you know everybody can look forward to it it's going to be a very very good match um and uh, I'll tell you, it goes longer than the cobalt one. <laughs> <laughs> I sure all of so our amazing. all of our matches from now on go longer than the cobalt. <laughs> awesome. that's, that's good. That's good. I, I am. Say, uh, I mean, oh, no spoilers. I was going to say oh, yeah. before ahead, you, before you went, Jevin. Like these three below me, or wherever they are on the screen, uh, predicted Hi- Hypershock to win this one. I've actually backed you guys to win this one, basing it off uh, P one from last year. Obviously, yes. turn them over. They have form of like struggling against. You know, lifters and being turned over so yeah that's it all logic. depends on whether alex remembers to remind will about how to self-write that's the main <laughs> thing in the fight they need a headset that's what they need yeah there they you need go. The headset. Headset. <laughs> there you go it's all kind of circle back around to that jevin yeah. you were gonna say something i'm sorry i mean i you said exactly what i was nervous of in the uh at the time it is you know lucky poses a very real threat in that hypershock loves to play monster trucks and ends up on its lid a lot and so um yeah it's still dangerous Concern. upside down. It is. I mean, it's still dangerous upside down, but slightly less maneuverable. And yeah. that's where Matt, as a phenomenal driver, you could definitely capitalize. And uh, it got me nervous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but I'm sure you can take uh, Matt Bales, you know. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> there probably is Matt Bales one, out yeah, there. Yeah. 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 One final thing, and we're kind of... I, I guess it kind of feeds off of this particular... Uh, this particular fight where you're fighting a heavy vert, this really scary vert, scary vert uh, bravado battle bot on Facebook. We'll just kind of end it here. I think this mm-hmm. is then we'll wrap this up. Uh, Jake Ewart of Hydra has previously said that Hydra and flippers in general aren't competitive anymore. And uh, as a team so well known for a flipper and then coming from someone who wants to build a flipper themselves, heavyweight, uh, what do flippers need to do to stay competitive in such a vert heavy meta or just such a kinetic heavy meta? Uh, mm. Not even just verts. I'll let Mark yes. answer that one. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. That's a long question, but you know, <laughs> I believe that. Flippers, yeah, and and in a in a dense version of it, it's uh, versatility, right? And I said this about Jake, and Jake's the best flipper driver out there right now, and they've got mm. the most. They've got the best ground game. They've got the best of a few parameters, but they're exactly the same every time, right? And uh, I do think his assessment that they're going to keep doing the same thing and, and win or not, I think his assessment that that's hard is, is true. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they've showed the best a few years ago and they're still doing the ground game, but they're kind of the same. Um, so I think the, the hard thing is being high versatility, right? And, uh, you know, most of the, the, the flippers are pretty big. Um, it's hard to make it really small and dense like you get like Minotaur. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's guys like JMO that that have a big machine that fight big, right? Use that as a, an advantage. So it's it's a hard combination. I, I don't mm-hmm. think it's easy to be a flipper, and I don't think it's easy to be a vert and go and walk through either, right? Uh, because every vert faces a vert too, right? So mm-hmm. I, I think versatility is the key. Um, density as a flipper is really hard, and, and that's why I love what Flip did. It's amazing what they packed into such a small machine. Um, they have some gyro concerns there but uh, I, I think they're still they're still road ahead for flippers and I, I, I like it or not I still think we have a chance to win every time so, I, I hope you keep uh, bringing yeah. Lucky yeah, back yeah, because that's what comes up, eh? maybe, maybe this is a, a British bias thing because obviously we didn't have spinners over here for years and years and we had mm-hmm. flippers dominate and still do dominate over here but, um, Let's them into battle bots. sorry <laughs> <laughs> but like you know I, I enjoy seeing something other than a kinetic energy spinner and you know Lucky and Hydra, you know, are two of the very best at doing that at the moment. And uh, please keep doing it. And I, I, yeah. I hope you keep bringing Lucky for years to come because I mean, this is, the it's whole a joy. thing is it's a joy. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, people love the big damage of the big spinners hitting each other, but nothing quite beats the spectacle of a big flipper throwing stuff around. I think Chris Rose has actually said previously the spectacle of seeing a robot get thrown out of the arena always gets him, and it's like we need more. We need it. Yeah, yeah. We need that, that, that paper. Zone. That paper to that scissors, you know, and yeah. like even you, 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 you need all of them. You don't just need a bunch of things that can punch you in the yeah. mouth and say, I, I could do this all day. But yeah, uh, yeah that's... I'll, I'll add one more thing on the flipper side. We were at Robo Games a few weeks ago and um, 
it was it was one of those places where and even when people were watching our photos from last week they're like oh like when we're loading in but look at lucky it's a big machine right mm -hmm. and people don't get it really a sense for it even at BattleBots, because it's so far away and the arena is far away and it's a big arena right but mm -hmm. when people have robo games and you see a 250 pound machine you know original sin you know mm -hmm. gary didn't flip it into the, the arena and then the arena shakes a little bit and it's really uh impressive like you you get a much different sense of the scale when you see it there in person mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people think like these are little roomba things and, and uh they're not, they're not that the <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's a lot so at this at the smaller event i think at robo games people really got a sense of like oh my gosh that's a lot of power right mm -hmm. so and it's fun to drive it's fun fun to sell the 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. there's a reason they fight in a very well protected box and at battle bots and then when you when you get up close and personal you're like oh my gosh <laughs> these things <laughs> yep. really have some serious power yeah. absolutely um i do that i say that every time i go to, to ruckus in orlando, orlando and they got the, they have a, a, a small arena they, they can't even run spinners in there and still they find ways to to make you jump out of your seat yeah uh, but yeah um gents thank you so much for all of your time it's been an absolute pleasure talking to the both of you and uh good luck for the round of 32 hopefully you can uh upset jevin a little bit more yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> you guys. No Thank worries. You. Guys. People happy. Um cool. normally I'd say we'd run through all the all of us here and outro normally, but I'm gonna skip that because there's a lot of us and I'll say we'll see you for actually our round of thirty two podcast. We've got our, our good friend Mr. Mr. Abramson coming back with us again, so we'll we'll chat with hey. him. Yeah. But we'll get to talk meantime, about bots that just missed it or you know. Absolutely. Maybe yeah. bots that we're thinking that maybe should have been in the bracket and should and, and we'll we'll get to talk about all of that. Yeah, well, due time. You know what? Too, the, um, like in the intro, like we talked for 20 minutes before we actually talked about the show. So if yeah. you guys wanted to cut that out of this and do that as a separate part, that would be okay. Because I, I kind of realized that was, uh, I, I That's got into fine. That. The old, it's all good. It's all good. It's all Honestly, good. Honestly, we'll we'll put anything out, and the viewers can either listen to it or, <laughs> or watch. That's, so, that's yeah. how we roll. We, no, nothing gets cut except unless we yeah, make yeah. A, a a drastic mistake, in which case then they get cut. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Or it could be another clip. Anyway, that was robo yeah. game fun. That was a really it's all good. good. It's all it's good. Cool. Honestly, I, I do mean it. Like, please keep bringing Lucky back. It's 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 a wonderful robot to watch, mm. and um, yeah, best of luck in the next round. We like Thank that. you guys so much. All right. Thank you. In the Bye. meantime. Take care, everybody. See you then. Yeah.